Good afternoon, welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm doing a video on this power supply here. It's just a standard ATX computer power supply, 400 watt, um, a Zellman GVN series. Uh, it's just a basic power supply, nothing special, nothing amazing. Um, but I want to fix it up. I've got a bunch of other ones to fix up as well. But I thought I'd start with this one because it looks like it might have the easiest fault. So, um, in a previous video, along with a bunch of other supplies, I tested this one with this uh, dim bulb tester, which I explained the operation of, and I explained how it can be used as a basic diagnostic tool to get, get some rough indication and quick information about the faults of a power supply, potentially. Um, and I will demonstrate again here. If you've seen that previous video, then feel free to skip this part. If not, well, keep going. Um, so this uh, tester, if you don't know what this is, it's basically... I've got, I've got a fuse block and stuff here, but... Uh, Basically, it's just a light bulb, standard light bulb, incandescent light bulb. Has to be that. Um, you can't use any other type of light bulb. Uh, has to be a filament light bulb, old style. Um, it's in series with the line supply to the device you're testing. Um, it works as a current limiting device, basically. Um, the thing about light bulbs is once they heat up, they limit, they self-regulate to a particular resistance, particular current. They can't really go above that. It's just physically impossible. Um, because of the way they function. Um, so, if you have a dead short in the power supply, um, or something like that, uh, the current, the fault current through it will be limited to whatever the, fault the, the full current of this light bulb while in normal operation. There's a 60 watt bulb on 240 volts. Uh, I think the current will be about 400 milliamps. I think? <laughs> anyway, it's not going to be much, um, whereas if I plug this directly into the power grid, you know, I have, well, quite a lot of power available. I think the uh, the fuse, uh, the main fuse is something like 120 amps or more, so, yeah, um, you know, this thing is going to uh, blow itself up and blow the fault clear long before that goes. So, <laughs> and of course it's going to do quite a bit of damage, so the whole point of this light bulb in series idea um, is to limit the amount of damage to the equipment that you're testing on, working on, whatever, um, in case there is a fault or in case you make a mistake, um, or your probe slips or something like that. So, it can be uh, quite a useful little tool. And that's one side of it, and I think that's the original intention of the the device, but I also discovered um, while playing around with it that it can be used as a diagnostic tool and uh, rudimentary but uh, still useful nonetheless because all you have to do is just plug it in. So for example I've got this power supply plugged in, it's switched on here, and if I switch my tester on we see a flash of light from the bulb. And that that's quite useful because it tells me that the uh, primary section on this um, everything from the switch, uh, from the plug input to the primary filter capacitor is probably okay. Um, the flash of the bulb is the inrush current uh, charging up the capacitor. Um, if anything up to that point was open or not working properly, the bulb would either be fully on, indicating a short somewhere, or it would be completely off, indicating that no power was flowing into the circuit. Um, so the fact we get a flash is good. It means the primary filter capacitor is charging up, so that means that the fuse must be okay, the bridge rectifier must be okay, any line filters in series must be okay, um, any current sense resistors must be okay, all that kind of thing. Um, so we straight away eliminated a bunch of components for faults, basically, um, with the flick of one switch and one bulb, which is pretty cool. Um, on the other hand, on the output here, I have a little um, test jig sort of thing as well. Um, and this uh, is basically a little board that has a bunch of LEDs on it, and it'll show me the status of all the voltage rails on the supply, and it'll tell me um, if they're running or not, and it also has a switch I can use to switch the power supply on and off. It won't give me an exact voltage reading or anything, but it does give me a basic idea, and we can see straight away there's no lights on it. Um, <laughs> that may not mean anything straight away, but of course uh, we have the 5 volt standby coming out of this, like any ATX power supply, it has a 5 volt standby rail on the purple wire, um, and that will go to a purple LED on this board. And the fact that that LED is not running tells me, well, there's probably no 5 volt standby rail. Um, the reasons for that are various, but there's not one at the moment. Um, there wasn't even a flash when I turned this on, so it indicates that the 5 volt standby is not even trying to power up, so there's either a dead short on the output of that, or something wrong with the primary side of that circuit, or 
something else. But either way, we know that it's not working, or at least it's a uh, low enough voltage that it can't turn the LED on. So it's, you know, under 2 volts or something if it was uh, just low. But considering how efficient these LEDs are, I'd be surprised if it didn't light up even dimly. So, yeah. Um, the fact that it doesn't light up at all tells me that the 5 volt standby rail is probably completely dead. And I can confirm that by using a voltage meter um, and actually testing that. But, you know, again, this is a quick, rough sort of indication. Alright, just taking a closer look at this here. Um, I've got all these wires on there as a way to break out the connections to connect loads to and stuff. I want to test the uh, the rails for ripple and all that. But we can see I have a bunch of LEDs and like I said, none of them are lit. Um, yeah, which obviously isn't a good sign. So, um, it's worth noting that uh, the ATX power supply here um, has a standard pinout, so this will work with pretty much all supplies except for certain Dell supplies um, of a certain vintage which uh, have the exact same connector, physical plastic connector, um, but the wiring is all completely different and the colours are all completely different. So, yeah. If you get one of those, you'll have to uh, obviously make an adapter, rewire it, or uh, have a different tester, for example. So now I want to test the uh, voltage on this, because I'm not entirely certain um, on what the, what the voltage is here. We don't know. Um, like I said, the LED will give a rough indication, but the uh, the exact voltage is not guarantee. So we can uh, test this out because it could be could be that it's running, but it's just really low and uh, too low to show up with the LED. Unlikely, I think, but it's possible. Um, yeah, there's nothing there, nothing at all. So we obviously need to troubleshoot the file standby. Um, if we want to get this thing working. So there could be, like I said, a bunch of reasons for that. Um, but you can troubleshoot the 5 volt standby as its own power supply because that's basically what it is. Um, it's just a 5 volt supply and that can run up to usually 2 or 3 amps. So it's a low power supply, 10, 15 watts. Um, and yeah, it, uh, it does its thing. So what I'm going to do, it powers the, uh, what does it do? It not only does it power the motherboard's standby power circuitry, um, it also powers the uh, the uh, the circuitry inside the power supply, so that when the motherboard you, you press your computer power supply computer case button, um, it tells the uh, power supply to turn on, and there has to be circuitry inside here to actually do that. So, without a five volt standby rail, this is not going to work. It's not like an AT power supply, whereas uh, as soon as you give it mains voltage, it just powers up um, straight away. So, first thing I want to actually do is I'll just do a, uh, 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 check the, check directly across the rail here, um, see what's up. 0.7 millivolts beep, that, if I reverse bias it, we have the same thing. So it looks like there is in fact a short on the secondary side of the 5 volt standby which could be from a bunch of things. If we check, for example, a different rail, like the uh, the uh, the 5 volt here, you see we got charging up a capacitor on the 5 volt rail. Same with, like, check the 3.3, .3. same thing, We're charging up the output capacitors. But, on the 5 volt rail, we've got a dead short. So, this could just be as simple as the 5 volt rectifier for the 5 volt standby is a shorted diode or something. It could be something really simple like that, or it could be a shorted power supply controller I see shorting the 5 volt standby rail. Um, I don't know, but that's where you got to find out. So let's have a look inside. So the next thing I want to do, now that I have a basic idea of what's what could be the problem, the secondary side of the 5 volt standby is probably where the fault is. Um, so, I'm going to open the supply here. This thing's never been opened before in its life. Um, you can see the warranty sticker is still intact, which is good. It means that no one else has done anything silly to it. Um, as opposed to a power supply that I previously looked at, where someone had uh, stolen one of the daughter boards out of it. 
Yeah, that's an interesting one. Could be fixable. Not sure yet. I think the board in question is the uh, monitoring thing. So anyway, I'll take this out and have a look. Let's see, is there any screws on the side? Alright, so, let's see, can this fan unplug? Yep, excellent. That's what we want. Now, <laughs> obviously you can see this thing is pretty small. It's only a 400 watt supply. No, there's not a lot of components on the top side. So this has got to be a surface mount design on the bottom. Um, there's a chip there. Interestingly enough, it's a 8 pin chip and a spot for a uh, 14 pin, I think. Um, so yeah, they're using a real basic little monitoring chip there. I'm not sure what it is. It's a Winbond WT75102S. Um, yeah, I don't recognize that. Got another 8-pin chip over here. Um, on the primary side, next to the small transformer, I'm pretty sure that'll be the 5-volt standby main IC. It's probably got the uh, switching MOSFET integrated into it. And then we got a probably a PFC and uh, controller combo IC here. Sorry, you can't really see much because this thing is all black and yeah, it's a, not a good colour scheme to try and take a uh, picture of, but yeah, anyway, got the basic stuff there, it's a very simple little supply. But yeah, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to have a look and see if I can notice anything, like a burnt component or something, could be, could be something obvious, that's the next thing you want to do. If you've got some idea of uh, where the general area is, of where the fault might be, um, you want to start looking in that area to see if you can spot anything that doesn't look quite right. Um, because a lot of times, if you have a faulty component, there will often be something visibly wrong with it. Not always, but often. You know, blown resistors will be burnt or discolored. Um, Blown semiconductors can be discolored or have a crack in them. Uh, capacitors can be bulging. Things like that. Sometimes the uh, component may be corroded. It could be water damaged and that kind of stuff. You can often find something visibly wrong if you look hard enough. Um, Let's see. So, I don't see any uh, burn marks on the underside of this uh, insulator plastic. Um, but that's not surprising, because something that burnt up could well have cleared a short by doing so. Now the bottom of this looks pretty much pristine. As is the rest of this power supply, to be honest. The fan had barely any dust in it. This one looks like it's uh, pretty much practically brand new and unused. Um, oh no, I do see something. These two here, the little uh, three-pin device, SOT23, I don't know if that's a transistor or a dual diode or something. Um, but that's got a big crack in it. One side is actually cracked off. And the resistor next to it has also got the end sort of looks a bit burnt. So could be the cause of why the 5 volt standby is not running. Um, but there's also a trace that goes off to three diodes here, which may be connected. Maybe if one of those was shorted, um, that could also be uh, causing a problem. So I don't know what these are doing, anything about the circuit at all. Um, annoyingly, this transistor actually seeing as half the case is cracked off and I can't find the other half. Um, I don't know what it is, but also fortunately I actually have another one of these power supplies with a different fault, um, which is exactly the same, so I should be able to pull the number off that one, hopefully. 
So we got these uh, two components here are blown. Maybe these diodes, or maybe this diode or something over here is uh, is is shorted possibly. So yeah, it could just be a simple case of that. Just replace these and replace whatever's shorted, and that is quite likely going to fix it. Um, I expect. I can't see anything else straight away. That could be a problem. The only other thing I noticed that was a bit dodgy is uh, this lead here for this uh, component is very long. I haven't trimmed that properly, so yeah. I doubt that has anything to do with the fault, but uh, yeah, just uh, not a great thing. I'll trim that off later myself. You can see just in the middle there, this uh, transistor or whatever with its side blown off. Um, and the, the left of it, that resistor, and then that goes down here to a diode or something. And there's also a couple of diodes over there, so possibly one of those has gone bad and it's taken this out. I've also got this really long untrimmed lead here, which uh, doesn't inspire much confidence. But like I said, I doubt that's uh, the cause of the fault. I think that's just uh, bad manufacturing. Of course it could be. It's right next to this. Possibly that lead shorted to the case. Um, I don't think so though. There's no, no hole in the insulating film, so... But yeah, that's uh, this transistor here, or whatever it is. It's another clue. So like I said, this uh, this sheet doesn't have a hole in it or anything. So I don't think that's got anything to do with anything. I think that long lead was just, just there. Um, I don't think that was a problem. But definitely these uh, burnt components here are definitely a problem. So let's uh, just test those for a laugh. So just testing this resistor here, it's quite interesting. We see it's actually still uh, still looking okay at 808 ohms. So it's a marked 821, which would be 820 ohms, but it's not uh, it's not completely burnt out. It's interesting. This transistor thing, and whatever it is, um, does still show some readings. We've got 600 millivolts there got nothing there. I don't know what it is because there's no marking. We've got 550 ohms there. It actually seems weirdly like it's still okay. Um, which is very strange because it's definitely got half its body missing. So I don't know what's up with that. Um, this diode here is still 500 ohms, 500 millivolts, so it's still fine. Um, we got these other diodes here, 513, uh, 540, 512. So these look alright too. So that's pretty weird. Um, yeah. Don't know what's going on there. Uh, I'll have to trace this uh, out and find out what this thing's actually feeding. Try and figure out what it's actually for. And uh, try and figure out why it's cracked. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any actual burn mark around it, so it's plausible that it was cracked during manufacture. And there may actually be nothing wrong with it, which is kind of weird. Um, because that sort of thing shouldn't become, shouldn't uh, go unnoticed. Uh, at least if there's any decent quality control, but who knows? This is a pretty budget power supply, so you never know. Like I said, this lead here is not trimmed properly. And there's another lead over here that's only just soldered in. Although I think there's just a, a link to increase current capacity with this trace, it doesn't really matter. Um, irrelevant, but yeah, interesting. So something funny going on there anyway, definitely. It's, it's the, the only obvious thing I can see. Um, I was looking at the thing. Also investigate the rest of the uh, 5 volt standby. Um, I'll check the rectifier diode and that kind of thing. I'm not sure where that actually is. I think it'll be this diode here. Again, hard to see. There's a big sort of 3 amp diode or something there which is I would say um these two pins here 
we can verify that the uh, the 5 volt standby output is here um, got some wire links got a filter capacitor and that goes down there to an inductor um, that inductor goes across there so yeah that's the uh, these two pads here it looks like um, looks like that's the diode so yeah but yeah that's very odd nothing else obviously shows up as bad so unless uh, unless something like this monitoring chip is shorted um, yeah bit weird anyway it's uh, yeah pretty much just a case of desoldering parts checking them um, all that kind of thing. So, and tracing this out is again take too long to show. So, um, yeah, not that hard to uh, imagine. You just look at the circuit traces, use your multimeter, figure out what connects to what, write it down, get an idea. Anyway, the good thing is I do have another one of these power supplies, um, an identical one. So hopefully that transistor or whatever won't be blown in that one and I can get the model number off it and figure out what's going on. Um, the silk screen next to it does say Q304, so it's most likely a transistor. Um, but what exactly, I don't know. It's probably just like an NPN, something like basic simple switching thing. They're probably just using it to switch something. Um, that kind of thing. Could, uh, could be sending a power-up signal to the uh, opto-isolator or something like that. Anyway, I'll investigate that and uh, come back as soon as I find anything else out and uh, see what the story is. Well, here's the uh, pins for the rectifier diode for the 5 volt standby. If we uh, connect the probes to either side of this diode, well, we get a, uh, a dead short there. Interestingly enough, the, uh, the long leads on this uh, component here is the thermistor for the uh, for the heatsink temperature sensor, I think. So, yeah, that wouldn't have anything to do with anything, really. Um, if that's shorter to the case, it might just make the fan run at full speed or or uh, completely turn off or run at the lowest speed, but it wouldn't have made these uh, transistor here blow up. Um, interestingly enough, I, I don't know if this has actually blown up at all. A close look at it, it looks like maybe the case was just cracked off um, from physical damage in the in the assembly process or something so yeah kinda weird I mean it does electrically test like it's uh, still a transistor so I wonder if there's uh, nothing wrong with it aside from the uh, crack in the side which is kinda weird um, but yeah anyway so this uh, diode looks like it could be shorted um, yeah there's definitely something something not uh, not right there of course this is checking from the uh, the negative especially from the negative rail to the positive rail through the transformer so if there's anything on the positive rail anything powered by the positive rail that's uh, shorted as well um, that's a f that'll be a false reading because it's basically in parallel with it um, so yeah obviously you desolder this diode and then uh, look at what else is connected in this circuit. Um, look at what else is powered from the 5 volt standby. Like I said, it'll be this monitoring chip. Um, will be also powered, so you want to look around here, see if there's any like shorted decoupling caps or if the chip itself is shorted. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, the, the, the easiest thing would be to take this diode out, see if it's the problem. It could be the problem. And now uh, this uh, crack transistor could be nothing to do with it. But it's interesting that it's like that. It's not uh, not usual. Not usual to see something that's damaged like that and still works, at least, for a start. Hmm. Anyway, I'll just hold that diode and, uh, and have a look. Also, you can also have a look, trace around 
disconnect anything else that runs on the 5 volt standby and see but it looks like uh, the other things that are that are powered off this are fed through this resistor the resistor over here um, it's uh, 272 2.7k seems a bit high but yeah I literally can't see anything else that's uh, directly powered off that except for the uh, the voltage feedback circuitry over here, or the TL431, so that's, uh, that taps off there and goes down here. And obviously that's for voltage sensing, and then we've got the opto-isolator here that feeds back to the primary side of the 5 volt standby. So yeah, let's obviously, you know, desolder this diode and uh, just see if the short goes away and check the component you removed and see if it's shorted. So it could be one of those, that diode or that 431, or could even be the opto opto isolator itself could be shorted although that would be in series I think with the uh, 431 so and with a resistor of course too so if that was shorted you'd see the resistance of those in series with it um, so yeah probably not that so yeah could be that diode but there's definitely something shorted there and uh, yeah, the quick quick look around it should be pretty easy to find out what alright so I've just uh, desoldered the diode and if I pull this out, um, you can have a look and see what's up with it. So this is a, uh, what is it, a SR560HG. Um, so that'll be a uh, high-speed rectifier, probably like 3-4 amps um, or something. It has to be high-speed because it's a switching power supply. Um, let's test and see uh, see what's up with it go here we should get uh, 0.5 get nothing oh, hang on yep point well no we should get 500 millivolts when I said 0.5 we should not get actually 0.5 millivolts that's uh, not good that's pretty much well that's shorted try it the other way same thing Yep. That is shorted, that diode is shorted, and that is most likely the problem. It's probably the only thing wrong with this supply is this diode has uh, failed. And, uh, yeah, the 5 volt standby rail doesn't work because this diode is shorted. So, I need to get a new one. Um, I don't think I have any. I do have fast rectifier diodes, but they're all like 1 amp ones or something. Uh, I don't think I have any um, 3 amp ones, but I can at least solder one of those in and just uh, prove that it works I guess um, but yeah I think all my high current diodes are all standard rectifiers so let's just uh, have a look at this diode see what it is so what did I say SR560 560 um, low noise voltage preamp yeah I don't think that's it is it SR560 HG Let's see what that comes up with. Nope, it comes up with even less. Okay, let's go search for SR560 diode. There we go, shot key HY. Let's have a look at that one. I mean, yeah, it's an 18 cent diode. Nothing particularly amazing. Standard thing. Got a data sheet here. I'm actually amazed it shows up on RS. Um, yeah, there we go. So yeah, it's a standard thing. Forward current, 5 amps. Yeah, that makes sense. So 5... Uh, so yeah, so SR560, it's 5 between 5 amps. So it's probably 5 amps is the 5, and then the 60 is going to be 60 volts. Yeah. SR560, so that's uh, 60 volt first voltage. Uh, 5 amp forward voltage, forward current. Um, yeah. So pretty cheap pretty basic I could buy I could buy 75 of them for $14 if I really wanted to so yeah that, that's uh, kinda surprising really that this diet is shorted um, kinda of, well not really I don't know it's kind of interesting I mean this power supply like I said is not very not very dusty or anything it looks like it's uh, really quite quite clean it hasn't been used at all and this diode is gone shorted uh, pretty much yeah 
in short order. Ha ha. So, I don't know, manufacturing defect with his diet, I guess. Um, and by the looks of it, a manufacturing defect with the uh, power supply too. Um, or at least with the, uh, the transistor in there. So, I don't know if that's um, <laughs> bad component suppliers selling bad parts, or if that transistor was broken in manufacture. I don't know, but either way. It's not very good. This power supply is, uh, hasn't been made very well, has it? We've already got two broken components, and it's hardly been used, so... Anyway, I'm going to have a look and see if I can find another diode for this thing. Well, I had a look in my uh, diode box, and unfortunately, I don't have anything that'll replace this properly. Uh, the best diode I have is this one here, the uh, SB340, so that's 3 amps, 40 volts. Uh, the 40 volt rating is lower than... 60 volts, but that should be fine because you know it's only a 5 volt standby rail. Um, and the uh, 3 amp rating is uh, too low, obviously. This is a 5 amp diode. I mean, this uh, 5 volt standby is only rated at uh, 2 amps output anyway, I think. But yeah, they've obviously used a 5 amp diode for a reason. Hopefully, it wasn't because it was cheaper, because uh, that might be why it's failed. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so. I don't want to waste one of I've got a bunch of these, but I don't want to waste that, so bothering to put it in, because like I said, just for testing, in any case, I'd have to replace this anyway, because it's still not the right one, so there's no point in doing that. So I might as well have a look at these other ones. Um, I've got a UF4007, so that's a fast recovery diode. Again, it's only a 1 amp diode, but, you know, I just want to test the uh, theory and see if the uh, if the thing works now. It should do. So, yeah. Let's just solder this diode in. Just quickly. Let's see. Like I said, this is not suitable for permanent repair. Um, you'd probably get away with using the... Uh, The, uh, the 3 amp one, at least for uh, a while, you wouldn't get away with using the 1 amp one. Not for anything more than just testing it anyway. So, but like I said, that's all I want to do at this point is just give it a quick test and see what happens. I'm going to ignore this uh, crack transistor there because, like I said, it uh, tests out fine with my multimeter, so there's probably actually nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah. Let me just make sure this diode is not shorting against the heatsink or anything. Nope, that's good. It's in place pretty well. Um, let me... Uh, let me plug the fan back in. Now... Oh, I'm just going to get my solder out of the way. If I turn this whole thing around... Let's make sure you don't have any... Uh, So there's no junk on here. Alrighty then. Let's see. You can see the fan. You can see everything here. If we plug this in, get my testing thing there. Get everything out of the way here. Um. Stick my test set there. Rightio, now. What do we have? Let's just jam this in there. If I jam that in there like that, 
because I can't find my crocodile clips. Um, make sure this board is sitting free. Obviously, we've got to plug this in. Make sure that's on. Let's power it up and see what happens. Would you look at that? We have two lights down here, and we got 5.1 volts on the output. Yeah, the color doesn't show up pretty well on here. If you can see on the side of my multimeter, you can see a purple color and a red color. So red means 5 volt standby. Um, PS on is high, so that means that's on, and the, and the purple is 5 volt standby. So two LEDs there. We want to put this into bypass mode for my light. So we got uh, full power when I switch it on. And when I switch it on, the fan spins, the lights all come on. There we go. It's working. Just kill power to it. <coughs> and there we go. So we got everything working there. That's all it was. A bad 5 volt standby rail. Caused by this shorted diode here. Which if I could just figure out where my camera is pointing. Yeah, there we go. So that's it bad diet. Don't know what's up with that transistor, but it seems fine, obviously. Yeah. Anyway, I'll still replace that, um, because you don't really want to have cracked components lying around. Um, probably replace that and that, tr and that resistor next to it, because they're both damaged. So maybe they're both damaged by something being dropped on them or something. Um, whatever. But yeah, that's that. A really simple repair. So there we go. This, uh, practically brand new power supply was uh, not working because of this uh, bad diode. 18 cents or less probably in uh, the quantities they would have purchased this in. Um, yeah. So I just have to find one of these. Next time I uh, make an order I'll buy the appropriate one, 5 amp. Um, buy a bunch of them because why not have some spare like I have with these. But yeah, that proves that uh, that's what it was. And you can see um, my initial prediction was in fact correct. Um, the primary side is fine. The uh, light bulb proved that. The uh, test set on the output proved that the 5 volt standby was bad. The uh, quick test of the multimeter showed it was uh, shorted on the output. And uh, yeah, first thing I removed was this diode and it was bad. Kind of surprising. Got uh, thrown off the trail a little bit with this... Uh, with the uh, random cracked transistor and, and resistor next to it. Um, but yeah, so I definitely replace those as well if I wanted to actually use this supply. Because uh, it's not really good to have components lying around that have cracked cases. Like I said, fortunately I have another one of these that I also bought at the same time. Which uh, should not have that transistor cracked, hopefully. I can find the model of that and order one of those. It's probably just something basic like a 3904 or or something like that. Um, I don't think it's going to be anything anything particularly uh, complicated. It's just a standard transistor I suspect. Um, and then I guess I can use this to uh, try and fix the other one which I'm pretty sure has a primary side fault. So, I mean this thing has active PFC obviously. You can tell by the coil there and, and stuff. So, it's possible that might have blown in the other one. Or something like that. Or maybe it's even just a bad bridge rectifier. Who knows? I mean, the fact that this diode is uh, practically brand new and is faulty. Um, it doesn't bode well for the rest of the thing. So, yeah. These are obviously pretty cheap. Um, yeah. Not surprising. It's probably the lowest end model. 400 watt is sort of like usually the minimum these days for, for most things. Especially for something with a big fan. Uh, anything lower than that, like 350 watt or 300 watt, usually is the older style with the 80 millimeter fan, um, because it's so low powered it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's that. Hopefully that was useful. Hopefully that was interesting, and I'll see you next time.